Welcome to this video. And in this video, we'll be looking at first order high pass filters. First order high pass filters. We look at the high pass filters in their two categories of the passive form and the active form of the high pass filters. So we'll start with the passive high pass. And of course, first order filter. The simplest passive first order high pass filter is when you have a capacitor and resistor in series and the output taken across the capacitor, the resistor. So you have a resistor and a, cap and a capacitor and a resistor in series, and the output is taken across the resistor. So this is the input and this is the output. From the resistor capacitor series network, we can observe that the output by voltage divider theorem will be given by R over R plus one over SC multiplied by P in. We obtain our transfer function H of S, which is the ratio between the output and the input in the Laplace form, which will be equal to SCR over SCR plus one. Would wish to make the highest coefficient of s or the coefficient of the highest power of s in the denominator to be one, and therefore we divide by rc on both the numerator and denominator, and our transfer function can be written as s over s plus one over rc, and this is the implementable transfer function of the simplest first order high pass passive filter. We can confirm that this transfer function implements a high pass filter by obtaining the transfer function in frequency domain where we obtain H of J omega will be equal to J omega over J omega plus one over RC. If we obtain the magnitude of our transfer function, the magnitude will be given by omega over omega squared plus one over RC squared squared. That is the magnitude squared function, the transfer function. We can test these across a number of values for omega. So our magnitude transfer function, H of J omega, is given by omega over omega squared plus one over RC squared square root. When omega is equals to zero, when omega is equals to zero, so we'll have zero divided by number and zero divided by anything is zero. And therefore our magnitude function will be equal to zero. When omega is equals to one over RC, then our magnitude function will be equal to, we'll have one over RC, this term will be one over R squared, and therefore our magnitude function will be one over the square root of root two, which is 0 0.707. And we can notice that this corresponds to the cutoff frequency of our given filter, since the cutoff frequency is the frequency at which the magnitude of the transfer function is 0 0.707 times the maximum magnitude. When omega tends to infinity, or as omega tends to infinity, we'll notice that our transfer function H of J omega magnitude will tend to one. We can sketch the magnitude function as a function of omega. magnitude as a function of omega. So when omega is zero, our magnitude is zero. 
when omega is one over RC, it's 0 0.707. And as omega tends to infinity, our magnitude tends to one. So if this is our magnitude one, our transfer function will tend to one and we'll have a magnitude of 0 0.707 at one over RC. And as you can see, this is the magnitude function of a high pass filter. And therefore our passive network implements a first order high pass filter. Next, we look at the active high pass filter. Of course, first order. Again, the simplest active high pass filter is configured as follows. Remember, for active filters, we only use the operational amplifier and RC components. So it's a series resistor capacitor network on the forward pad and a resistor in the feedback pad. The operational amplifier is connected in its inverting mode. So this is the input V in, and this is our output V out. From this, we notice there is an impedance on the forward path. The impedance on the forward path can be obtained as Z is equals to R1 plus one over SC. The capacitor and resistor are in series and therefore we sum their impedance, that is resistance and reactance. This can be written as SCR1 plus one over SC. We know that the currents V in divided by Z will be equal to negative V out divided by R2. The current in the forward path is the same as the current in the feedback path since the potential difference at this point is zero, having grounded the positive input terminal, the negative input terminal acquires a virtual ground. And therefore, the current in this direction will be V in divided by the impedance, which will be equal to the negative of the current in the feedback path, from which you can obtain our transfer function as, or our function as V in into SC over SC R1 plus one will be equal to negative V out over R2. Obtaining the transfer function V out over V in, which is our transfer function, you obtain this to be negative SC R2 over SC R1 plus one. Again, we would wish to make the coefficient of S in the denominator to be one, we divide by CR1, which you can write as S R2 over R1 over S plus one over CR1. If we choose R1 to be equal to R2, equal to R, our transfer function will be S over S plus one over RC. This is negative. And as you can see, the transfer function is similar to that of a passive first order filter. This was the transfer function of a first order passive filter. And when we choose R2 to be equal to R1, we obtain a similar transfer function. Except for the negative sign, 
which we can reinvert the signal by connecting a second stage of an inverting amplifier network with a gain of negative one. And therefore, our filter will give us a gain of S over S plus one over RC. And those are the first order high pass filters, the passive first order field filter, and the active first order high pass filter. That's the end of my presentation and thank you for watching the video.